What's going on guys, Matt here, and today I'm gonna to show you how we crate trained our Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever in just two days of picking him up from the breeder and how this one trick I think was a total game changer for us. Do me a quick favor, if you want to follow our journey of training our toller tater and you wanna see us do training videos, day in the life videos, hunting videos, and everything else, hit that subscribe button right now as we are doing our best to upload at least on a weekly basis, if not more. Let's jump into this video and how how we do crate training. So as you guys know, the first important thing for crate training is to get a crate that is just big enough for your puppy. You don't want a big crate that your dog's gonna have a ton of room to roam around in. The reason for that is, is they can easily pee in a big crate and it not affect them. If Tater were to pee in this crate, he will 100% be sitting in it. And so we wanted to get a crate that was just big enough for him to match the size of when we picked him up from the breeder. Uh, today, Tater's 11 weeks old. He will probably outgrow this crate. I would say within the next two or three weeks and then we'll upgrade to the next size. So the first thing that a lot of people do wrong in crate training is they put the crate in the furthest room away from their bedroom possible. And we all know why they do this, right? They do this because they don't want to hear the barking and the crying. But the thing is, is you actually want to put the crate in your bedroom. And I'm standing next to our bed right here where we did our crate training. And the first thing that you want to try is to simply put your crate next to the bed on the floor facing your pillows. This way, the dog will hopefully understand that it's close to you, it'll probably hear you moving around in bed, and it won't feel alone. You have to remember, when you pick your dog up from the breeder, this is the first time it's ever been away from its litter, its mom, it's scared, it doesn't know you as the owner, and it's in a new place. So it's our job to make him as comfortable as possible. Now for us, when we did this with Tater, it helped a lot, but it didn't make him stop crying 100%. So the next thing that you can do is you can get some kind of stand or stool, put it next to your bed so it's the same height as your bed as you can see here. And again, face the door towards the pillows. That way the dog can physically see you now. So this is what really helped Tater when we moved him to this stage. Come here, buddy. When we moved Tater to this stage, and we put him up here at the same level. We were able to put our hand on the, on the crate or our fingers just inside the cage. He could smell them, he could, he could nibble them, he could lick them. And then he knew, hey, I'm close to my owners and he felt a lot more comfortable. As soon as we did this, he almost immediately stopped crying, immediately stopped barking. We didn't have any kind of, of special toys in his cage or anything like that. And literally within two days, he was crate trained. And the cool thing was, not only was he crate trained, but we would leave his crate door open, just like you can see here. It's open. We would leave this door open and we would put it in our laundry room during the day and he very, very quickly started going in there by himself. And so this is the hack that we used to crate, crate train our dog and not only crate train him, but teach him to love his crate. Dogs are den animals. They are bred and meant to be living in spaces like this. It makes them feel safe and secure. Dogs want to have this type of thing, but you just have to get through that tough part of crate training of the barking and crying. And so here's the deal. This dog is still in a crate in our bedroom at 11 weeks. And you're asking, well, if he's crate trained, why would you do that? It's simply because I want to be able to hear him when he wakes up in the middle of the night to go potty. As a puppy, they still can't hold their bladders completely. And so Tater typically goes to bed between 8.30 or 9, and he gets up at 11, and he gets up at 5 a.m. Sometimes it's 3, sometimes it's 4, but I want to be able to physically hear that when he's waking up. That way he doesn't have an accident in his crate. And he's barking at me now because he's getting a little riled up. So I hope this video helped. If it did, hit that subscribe button right now and subscribe to our channel to learn and see more training videos like this one. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining on our journey.